What is up everyone? I hope you're all good. So we are finally back taking a look at the axolotls and their tank and we're going to cover everything in this video from feeding to the setup to well, everything that you need to know about axolotls. They're definitely a pet that needs quite a bit of consideration to be honest. When I thought about making this video there's actually a lot more info than what I would normally put into a fish version of this. It's really weird but anyway Let's get into it. Let's talk about axolotls and everything that I think you need to know. Now axolotls are actually a salamander that never leaves the water. It's a bit of a weird one. Essentially they don't produce a hormone like frogs and newts and that when they turn from tadpole to frog the axolotls don't actually produce that hormone so they never go through the metamorphosis from underwater creature to above water creature. Now originally in the wild the axolotls came from two main lakes in Mexico which is Lake Chalco, C-H-A-C-O, and then Xochimilco begins with an X and I'm sorry to anyone who can pronounce that properly because I've probably just butchered that but yeah two lakes Chalco and Xochimilco I think that's right. Now, unfortunately, both of these lakes are in a pretty bad way. Lake Chalco pretty much has no existing axolotl population at all, as far as I can find out, and is pretty much a shell of its former self because it's been drained for, well, us humans, unfortunately. Xochimilco, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right, has a small population of axolotls from what I can find out, but again, they have to compete with introduced food fish like tilapia, and the pollution that unfortunately we're putting into the lake. The one good thing is there are breeding projects for axolotls trying to maintain the wild gene pool, I suppose you would say, and preserve them for future generations. It wouldn't be the simple case of taking one of these and breeding it with more and putting it back into the lake because the genes and the, I suppose, lineage of these is questionable. You don't know if there's been other things mixed into them. You don't know how strong the gene pool is. Recently, Practical Fishkeeping magazine actually done an article on the axolotls, which was cool because I was still working on this video while that article came out. And when I read that article, it said that all or the majority of domestic axolotls come from something like 30 imported animals into France in the 1800s. Like, so all domestic axolotls supposedly come from that. There are obviously going to be ones that have probably come into zoo collections and stuff that are different, but how mad to think is that? Like, so that's why the genes of these probably isn't good to reintroduce into the lakes. When setting up an aquarium for axolotls, there are quite a few things to bear in mind, but I would say the main one that is problematic for them is them eating things that they shouldn't. So when you're looking at substrates, a really fine sand or no substrate at all is the best way forward. Personally, I don't like the no substrate look. When you've got a clear glass bottom and you've got those axolotls trying to sort of scrabble around on the bottom, I just don't think it's very nice and the lights reflect off of it. It's just, it's not my style. So I have used fine sands for my bigger axolotls before, but when they were babies, I actually had them on pieces of slate that I just sort of stacked into the aquarium, almost like a, a patio or a paving. And I literally stacked slate all the way across the bottom of the aquarium, just so they had something to grip onto and I knew that they couldn't eat it. The same has to be said for all other things in the aquarium, whether you're putting rocks in there, pieces of wood in there, ornaments, whatever, you don't want them to be able to take or bite it and swallow it because it can cause major problems with axolotls. I know of a couple of rescue axolotls that were at the zoo near me, Tropicaria, and they were pooping pink gravel for weeks. Luckily, it didn't cause a problem with them and it passed through them, but that's not the case for a lot of axolotls and it actually leads to them becoming very, very ill. If you're looking at getting a bit of greenery into the aquarium, you might look at plastic plants or silk plants. Again, just make sure that they can't break up and be swallowed essentially. If you're looking at live plants, you're really gonna want to keep them as all those low light loving plants. So things like anubiuses, java ferns, even the vallis does quite well, actually really well in here and diffuses a lot of the light. You could also use floating plants on the surface because that would again give them dappled shade and it would break up that lighting. 
axolotls really don't like bright lighting. They normally hide away. My guys and girls have got quite used to it now, as in being in a house and being in a lit aquarium. And even if I turn the lights up full, they don't seem to bother. But while they're young and while they're getting used to being in the home and being with you, I would always run the lights a little bit dimmer. It just means that they can chill out and get used to their surroundings. Temperature is another thing that axolotls can really struggle with. Depending on where you are in the world, it can be a problem. It certainly has been a problem for mine when they were younger. Normally they like it anywhere from 16 to 18 degrees Celsius. I have kept them cooler and I have kept them warmer at times. I have had the tank running up to about 20 degrees before. It's okay for short periods, maybe in the summer when you get a bit of a heat wave, but for long periods of time, you really wanna try and avoid it because again, it can cause major health problems for the axolotls if they're too warm for too long. If your house is too warm and your heart is set on axolotls or maybe you live in a warm country or whatever and your heart is set on axolotls, a chiller is probably your best way of doing it. The easiest way to explain what a chiller is is essentially a fridge that you pump water through and it pumps back into your aquarium. So you can set the temperature of your chiller to whatever you want and it will just keep processing the water and keep that temperature down. Essentially a reverse heater that sits outside of your aquarium. Now the problem is with chillers is they aren't cheap. They are normally two, three hundred pounds plus to get a decent one that I would trust to run on my axolotls. So if you think you might be struggling with temperatures for a long period of time, it's definitely worth doing your homework and research before getting an axolotl. If you're just dealing with a short period of time that the tank's gonna be running hotter than normal, there are ways that you can try and help bring it down. Obviously removing the lids so that you're letting air circulation and you're letting the heat come out of the aquarium. Most of the time we're running LEDs now, so there's not a great deal of heat associated with them, but certainly when we used to run fluorescent tubes, taking the lid off would remove a lot of heat out of the aquarium. If your axolotls are prone to being a little bit skittish and jumpy, you might be worth putting a mesh lid over it. Or if you've got cats that like to sit on top of your tank, it may be worth putting a mesh on top to make sure nothing gets out or in. Once you've removed those lids, you can actually place a fan, like a normal desk fan, just blowing air over the surface of the water. This is again gonna help remove any heat and it will just bring the temperature down a little bit. It's not gonna be a massive amount, but it will certainly help rather than doing nothing. Other things you can do to try and keep your axolotl aquarium cool in the summer or in the heat wave is by doing small little water changes with slightly cooler water. The one thing you've got to remember is don't go too extreme because temperature shock is a thing. It could stress them out. So be sure just to be careful. It would be better to do lots of little ones rather than one big water change. The other thing that you can do, and I have seen it done, I don't personally like doing it, is freezing bottles of water and then floating them on top of the aquarium. It's probably not so bad for axolotls, but in tropical aquariums, it can cause like a little cold spot and then that can cause problems with your fish. But I guess axolotls wouldn't be as bad, so the frozen bottle trick might work quite well for them. Lastly, increasing circulation. So having an airstone running, bubbling up in the aquarium to turn the water over is gonna help keep that heat down and keep the oxygen levels up. As with anything, it's always worth just really being cautious, researching it, working out what one's gonna be easiest and best for you, and not doing anything too drastic and extreme and fast because it's just gonna stress them out. So just be slow and methodical and think about your process and you'll be absolutely fine. When it comes to parameters, I've not found my axolotls to be too fussy, to be honest. I think as long as you avoid the super extreme soft water, they seem to do fine. Make sure there's ample filtration and their waste is being removed. And yeah, they do well. I think it's more about clean water than it is about anything else. Axolotls do prefer a slightly harder water. So if you're worried about your water being too soft, you can get essentially axolotl salt mixes now, um, but they're not like salt, like out of the sea salt. They're essentially a mix of minerals in like a powdered form. You dissolve it into the water and away you go. It will bring the pH up. Again, make sure you read the instructions, make sure you're testing your water to check how much of that powder you've got to put in. I use Axotonic, which is up there somewhere, works a treat for me. I know exactly how many spoonfuls I've got to put into each bucket, I dissolve it, and away you go. I test it each time just to make sure I'm getting it right, but I am pretty solid on how many spoons per bucket I need to do now. One other thing to talk about when mentioning axolotls and water chemistry and making it safe for them is axolotls are allergic. Well, no, they're not allergic, they're 
I don't know what they are, but they do not like aloe vera, um, obviously, because, you know, it doesn't grow underwater. But they really don't like it. And a lot of water treatments actually have aloe vera in it. So it's not safe, really, for axolotls. There might be a small amount, so you might get away with it. And I've heard people say, oh, I've been using that one with aloe vera in it for 10 years. Yeah, and if it's a small amount in there, you might get away with it, but it's definitely worth researching. There aren't many water conditioners that have actually been tested on axolotls. Obviously, it's a bit of a small part of the hobby, and most of the water conditioners are designed for fish and not axolotls. So again, I use the NT Labs Axo Safe, which is up on my shelf. That's perfect because it's been designed and made for axolotls so that there's no problems, there's no poisoning, there's no issues. So yeah, I do that because I know it's safe. There are probably a few other water conditioners out there that don't have aloe vera in them. My concern would be is what else they've got in them that the axolotls might not like. So I just use that. It's safe. I know it's safe. That's what I stick with. Sizing on axolotls can be very variable. Um, obviously, because you've got all the different colour strains, the genetics aren't as strong in certain colour strains, the sizing that you'll see online quoted is variable. Anywhere from about 15 centimetres up to about 30 centimetres is quoted. I have seen some monster axolotls at like 30 centimetres long or maybe just under, and they are huge. But I've had other people say, oh, I've had mine for 20 years in a 200 litre aquarium and they've not grown anything bigger than 15 centimetres. So it's well worth sort of being ready for a chunky axolotl. This is a really chunky aquarium. This is like over 300 litres and it's got four axolotls in it. So I've given them the space to sort of be happy. I wouldn't always recommend keeping them in a group, but this group do fine. And I will talk about groups and keeping them together a little bit later in the video. When juvenile, you can probably keep them in quite a small aquarium. We kept ours in probably a 60, maybe 70 litre aquarium when they were really, really small. As they grew, we upgraded the aquarium. Now that's probably the most expensive way to do it because you go from a 60 to 100, from 100 to 150, to a 200 and then to a 300. So I've probably bought five or six aquariums over their lifespan. So sometimes you are better just buying a maybe 150, 200 litre aquarium to start with so that you've got the space for them to grow into. It will also mean that the water is less likely to go bad and toxic if you've got less animals living in a bigger water volume. So my advice would be buy the biggest aquarium you can right at the start because it just means it's gonna be cheaper in the long run. So as I've mentioned already, keeping axolotls in groups isn't always the best option. Single axolotls seem to do as well as axolotls in pairs and groups and so on, sometimes better to be honest. What can happen when you're keeping them in groups is the aggression levels and them sort of biting each other can happen more frequently, obviously. Now, axolotls are amazing creatures in the fact that they can regrow limbs and they can regrow bits of their tail and their gills and all of that stuff. But if this is happening every week or every month and they're losing a limb and having to regrow it, it's gonna be really stressful on the creature. And unfortunately, you don't want that. So if you are worried about aggression or you end up with a really aggressive axolotl, it's really worth paying attention to what's happening and maybe separating them if need be. So if your heart is set on breeding them or maybe keeping them in a group or whatever, there are a few things that you need to know about axolotls to make sure you've got the best chance of success. Now that is making sure they've all got their own little hiding spaces. They've got caves, they've got rocks, they've got plants to hide behind. The more line of sight that you can break up if keeping axolotls in groups, the better. And obviously, like I've said before, the bigger the tank, the more space they've got to get away from each other, the better. So the more of these things you can do, the more likely you are to succeed with keeping axolotls in a group. This group, as I've said, have been together a long time and they really don't bother each other anymore. They'll sit on top of each other, they'll eat and feed around each other and they don't have any problems. I have had it where juvenile axolotls will try and bite a pellet or something like that and someone else's leg is there and that's the end of the leg. So I would always be really cautious when keeping axolotls in groups. The other thing to mention at this point, I suppose, is other tank mates for axolotls. So things like fish and cleanup crew and stuff. In all honesty, the risk is too high for me. The axolotl's more than likely gonna see it as lunch, and it's gonna be a slow moving fish that is just gonna end up as dinner, or the axolotl's frilly gills are gonna be seen as food. Things like barbs and zebradanios and things like that that are quick enough to get away from the axolotl's mouth, unfortunately sometimes come back and bite the gills of the axolotl. Like I say, the risk is just too high on either side of it causing a problem. You will see it done online in a few different places. 
that's up to you and that's up to them. I would personally recommend just keeping the axolotls on their own. They're a hard enough creature to look after as it is, let alone by causing more problems by putting other animals with them. When it comes to feeding axolotls, in all honesty, they're fairly simple, albeit a bit slow and dopey. They are fairly simple. A mixture of pelleted foods that are designed for axolotls, frozen things like bloodworms and shrimps and things like that, and then maybe even some live foods that are well cleaned, so earthworms and yeah, that sort of thing. The more of a varied diet you can give them, the better. They do like meaty foods and they do really well on it, but you've just got to make sure you're getting a well-rounded diet into them to make sure, again, that they do well. Throughout the week, I normally use the NT Labs axolotl food. It's just a pelleted food that is designed specifically for them. And I just make sure they're getting that probably once every two or three days. They're not voracious feeders. They're not going out there every day and looking for more food. And if you just keep them topped up, it keeps the aquarium cleaner and it keeps them happier. And then once a week or so, I'll normally do something like a frozen food. I don't often go down the live food route in all honesty, just because, well, personally, it's hard for me to get hold of. And I always worry about how clean or how good quality the live food is. So yeah, once a week, I'll normally give them a frozen feed of something like blood worm or something like that. And that keeps my axolotls going really, really well. Telling males and females of axolotls is quite simple once they get older. When they're juvenile, it's a little bit trickier, but males will have a bulbous bit just near their tail and their back legs. Um, and females will normally be a little bit chunkier. They'll obviously hold more eggs, so they're a little bit more rotund. As for breeding axolotls, in all honesty, it's fairly easy. The group behind me have bred several times last year and the year before. And as long as you maintain the aquarium, you give them good places to hide and to spawn, and you keep them fed with decent quality foods, they'll generally get on it and they will spawn at some point of their own accord. What you will end up with is essentially what looks like frog spawn stuck all around your aquarium, little clear balls with dots in the middle essentially. Now these will take a couple of weeks normally to develop and start to sort of look like anything and then start to hatch. If you want some of the babies to survive, then your best bet is to remove some of those eggs and get them into a separate like holding tank or plastic tub and just run an air driven filter on there. You don't need anything over complicated. Something like that will be perfect. Once the axolotl babies hatch, then you're looking at feeding them. I found most of the time that really small frozen foods and really small live foods were perfect for them. Things like baby brine shrimp was an absolute winner in my case. But I have seen people saying about crushing up pellets and things like that, making them into a powder. Um, and then the axolotl babies will eat off of that. It seems to vary from person to person how well or how badly they got on with just feeding frozen or just feeding live or whatever. It's up to personal choice. But one thing to remember with them is they are not the kindest to each other. They are cannibalistic at this age and the babies will tuck into each other. They will bite each other. You know, a smaller sibling, unfortunately, is fair game in the axolotl world. So if you're looking at trying to get a few to survive, sometimes separating them out into different tanks, trying to separate them by size, it's a tricky game, but it's just whatever's going to work best for you, to be honest. As with every grow on tank, as with every baby tank, Keep it clean, keep it well filtered, keep it water changed, keep them really well fed, and you'll have the best success rate. If you start dropping off on water changing or the water gets a little bit dirty or you leave a bit of food in there for a long period of time, this is when you're gonna start having troubles with the baby surviving. So that's it. I think I've got all of the knowledge out of my head onto the camera for you guys and girls to listen to. Um, obviously, if there's any other questions you've got, drop them in the comments or find a new social media post from me on Instagram or Facebook. And I'll always try and comment back for the first day or so. It does get a bit hectic with the amount of social media avenues I've got and the amount of comments that come in, but I do try and reply. So if you've got an important question about axolotls, then yeah, ping it over on there. I have got something coming up actually. I'm opening up an email where hopefully we can interact. You can send me pictures of tanks and fish and axolotls and you can ask me your opinions on stuff. You can ask me your opinion, my opinion on your stuff. I knew what I meant. Anyway, but that'll be coming up. So watch out on my social medias for that email address. It might go a little bit mental, so it might take me a while to get through all the emails and I'll make videos about them and stuff. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking now. Hopefully you've liked it. Hopefully it's been useful. I will see you in the next one.